Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Alexis for anybody who doesn't know. Welcome if you're new or welcome back if you have been here before. I am the author of A Journey Into Truth, Unveiling Life's Secrets for Truth Seekers. And this book talks all about the last six years of my life, the adventures I've been on, the experiences I've had on my spiritual journey, and it also gives some of the life lessons and teachings and philosophies that I have learned along the way. So if you're interested in learning more about that book, you can always go to my website, www.vibratetocreate.com, or you can find me on Instagram at vibrate to create. Here on Vibrate to Create, I talk about all things spiritual and metaphysical. I also talk about my own personal life experiences, the awarenesses I've come to because of those experiences, and I also make reaction videos to things like spiritual teachers, spiritual teachings, inspirational, motivational, sometimes funny videos, and I also make entrepreneurial videos letting you guys know how to self-publish your own books. If you're interested in that kind of content, you can click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified of when I post new videos so you never miss a video. Today on Vibrate to Create, you are watching part 8 of this series titled A Journey into Becoming an Author. And in this series, you're going to get to see me becoming an author. You're also going to get to see the emotions I was experiencing, the roadblocks I came across, the exciting moments that I had all along my journey of self-publishing a journey into truth. So in today's video, you're going to get to see me after an improv class. And the reason I took this class was because I really wanted to have more practice being up on stage in case it was ever needed when my book comes out or if I do interviews, anything like that so I really wanted to practice doing this so you're gonna get to see me after my improv class just what I was experiencing what happened during the class and then after that you're also gonna get to see me formatting or talking about formatting the book and also about things I was experiencing what else I learned along my journey so today's a pretty cool video I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you after the video focused mostly on emotion and being able to put that into your scenes we had a guest speaker I think his name was like Dan Jevlons or something and he's an actor it was really cool to see this actor there because he was like really funny he was an older guy it was really fun to see the teachers up there doing the improv together it was really cool to watch we usually begin the class with doing warm-up exercises and for this one we started off with zip zap zop where you basically everybody stands in a full circle together like around each other and then one person will start off with zip and they'll point at somebody and that person will have to say zap and then they'll have to point at someone else and say zap and then it just keeps going around the whole circle so we always basically start with that and then at the end, at the end of the class, we had this moment where we were basically building our confidence up on the stage and it was the first time I think that we've actually gone up on our own by ourselves and we had to go up there and say, hi, my name is, say your name, and then you say, prepare to be amazed and then you do something dumb like some kind of dance or you just do something that's pretty irrelevant or just funny and for me I went up there and I wasn't I was nervous but I was also kind of okay more okay with it than I thought I would be I went up there and I said hello everybody my name is Alexis prepare to be amazed and I sat for a second and I went and that was it <laughs> but it was so much fun the other cool exercise that we did was he had a list of different emotions and 
two people would go up as partners to the front of, on the stage and the people in the audience would give out some kind of location. Once the people up on the stage had the location, one of the people was going to get the emotion whispered into their ear. One of the people got enthusiastic and it was whispered to him in the ear. So the audience didn't know what the emotion was and the partner didn't know what the emotion was. And these people, they got the location of a thermometer factory. And so they, the one guy who had the emotion of enthusiasm, he was sitting there like moving all of the thermometers and he was so excited about moving the thermometers. And it was really cute, it was really funny to watch. And then at the end, everybody had to say what the emotion was that that person had gotten. And everybody could guess because basically we were seeing him use his emotions, use his body language. And for mine, I, I wasn't the one that got the emotion, but my partner was. And he got the emotion of confused. And we both got the location of a construction site. And I could not stop laughing because my first impulse was to pretend like I was using a jackhammer and the moment that I did that I basically like shot myself in the foot and had to keep the jackhammer the whole time and it felt so awkward to have it with me. <laughs> I was like Ooh. <laughs> so I, I couldn't keep a straight face because I was sitting there with the jackhammer and then the guy he got confused so he kept like pretending like he didn't know what was going on and then I had to come up with a backstory so I go I gave you this job 10 days ago. You said you knew what you were going to be doing. So I turned into like the boss who gave this guy a job at this construction site and he didn't know what he was doing. It was really funny to watch it kind of unfold. With these improv classes, I'm learning so much about stage presence and being up on stage and kind of getting over those jitters or those fears of looking dumb up on the stage. One of the other exercises that we did was we had to mirror somebody by pantomiming what they were doing. And at first, well, he recommended that you use, well, he recommended that you find a partner that you haven't worked with yet. And so I walked up to this guy, he's like a really tall guy, he's been really funny in the class, so I walked up to him and we both kind of just took, made eye contact and agreed we were going to be partners. And then this girl, she's super funny, she's adorable. She like walked up to him and she was like, no, she's my partner. <laughs> she like kicked him out and he was like, all right. So she took me over basically. And we had so much fun doing that exercise together. I could not stop laughing, I was literally in tears. Because we, ha I can't even, I can't show you guys because it's dark. But it turned into that we were, it looked like we were voguing or like we were dancing in slow motion. It was so funny and I could not stop laughing, especially watching her. <laughs> it was funny as hell. So much fun. I'm happy she took over and was like, no, she's my partner. That was a really fun class to, to be a part of. I'm so happy I decided to do an improv class. And I'm, I'm serious, you guys. I would definitely recommend trying it out. I don't know if every improv group is the same or has the same energy. I'm sure they don't or have the same exercises. But this one, it was so much fun. I would definitely do it again. As far as my book, some updates is I created two separate journals. One of them is going to be a dream journal where you can log and write and analyze your dreams and I've made the whole cover myself. I made the whole interior myself. I formatted everything on my own. I, I made it into a book that I would be happy to use. And I think I'm pretty sure, well I will, I am gonna buy it once it comes out because I'm gonna be using it. Usually I just write my dreams in my phone in the morning whenever it's a very important dream or it feels like an important dream but I'm really excited to have something that I can keep next to my bed and just write down the dreams each night and that way I can log it and keep an eye on anything that my dreams might be communicating to me. And so that's coming out. I also have a dream journal part two. That one is gonna be 
be mostly about future dreams, future plans, future goals. I've come up with the whole interior myself as well. I came up with the cover on my own as well. I formatted the whole thing, came up with the design and the colors, and my logo is all over it. It's so cool! Ah! I'm so excited to have them in my hands and to be able to write in them on my own and manifest with my own journal and write down my goals and the things I want to accomplish and my bucket list items and then afterwards many years later hopefully look back on it and be able to see that those dreams have happened and have become a reality so those I've been working on I'm also heavily working on the editing of the manuscript because it has to be done in a couple of days so that my cover designer can proceed forward to working on the spine and the back cover. As far as the cover designer, she also showed me different pictures of blue butterflies to go on the back. I got the developmental editor's suggestions and edits back. She also sent me an editorial letter. She had some really good suggestions of ways that I could tighten up the manuscript, take out some of the fluffy words that aren't needed. She also helped me to change the name of the book, actually. She suggested, she suggested that I don't use the word truth in the title three times. So I decided I was going to change the title to A Journey Into Truth, Unveiling Life's Secrets for Truth Seekers, which I think is a much more catch, catching title. It kind of leaves intrigue or makes people want to uncover the mysteries of life. And I think that really encompasses the purpose of the book anyways. And it looks beautiful on the cover. I've seen what it looks like on the cover as well. It's beautiful. That is a big thing that changed with the book. I also decided, hopefully, this will work out, hopefully. I'm working on learning about formatting the interior of my book so that I don't have to pay for an extra fee so that I can have somebody else format it. <clears throat> So I've started learning about formatting books, also what goes in the front matter and the back matter, the blank pages that should go in there, the title page, the copyright page, the author's biography, acknowledgments, the quote page, all kinds of stuff that I'm really learning about that should be in a book. Also I have to learn about the margins, I have to learn about uh, the gutter the extra space has to go on the inside so that the spine can be there, how to get the separate numbers on different pages, how to change the size of the book to be the right size, and then also deciding on which font I'm going to want to use. I decided I think I'm going to be using my logo but I'm going to be changing the transparency of it in Photoshop so that it's like a much more opaque kind of butterfly on the page. Other than that, I've been working on the documentary, this thing that you guys are watching right now. I've been editing and formatting that, adding music, watching it back, and it's so much fun to see these clips because I remember being in that moment and being feeling those feelings I was feeling and this, that excitement and watching it back, I feel that excitement again. It's so much fun to watch and I'm so happy I picked up the camera and decided to start filming it and documenting it because it's gonna be such a cool video. <laughs> You're too wild. Today I went to Office Depot and I picked up a copy of my manuscript so that I could look at it in print form because I'm, <clears throat> I have like a bubble in my throat. I went to Office Depot today and I picked up a copy of my manuscript as it is 
right now and I'm going through literally every single word trying to make sure there are no typos. I hope I can get pretty much all of them and at least like if there's one that's okay because that means I've got most of them. But I got that manuscript. I've been checking and double checking and rechecking and re-rechecking. It's crazy to think of how many ways you can say something. You can literally say the same sentence in a hundred, like, I don't even know how many ways, like millions of ways. And then you could, then you could shorten that sentence, you could take the comma out and add a period, you could add a semicolon, you could add a colon, you could, oh my gosh, the possibilities are endless. <sighs> so I'm trying to go through every single line, make sure I've said every sentence in the best way I possibly could have said it or want to say it, or a way that would keep people interested in reading and um, continuing on with the book. That's what I've been doing mostly today for literally the past like week and a half. I've been working non-stop. And that's because I'm, well, first of all, I'm house sitting right now. And while I'm house sitting, I'm usually always working on my stuff, like my books and my everything. And so I've been there for about a week and a half and I'm house sitting two golden retrievers as their, parent, as their family are out on vacation. I'm leaving right now just because I have a, uh, another drop-in to do for another dog, but I wanted to talk to you guys about what's been going on because there's so much changing and I'm learning so much along this process. So I, I have that manuscript, but I've been working for the past week and a half, day, like from morning, from the moment I wake up until I go to bed. And sometimes I don't even eat, like I forget to eat food. I forget to drink water and I'm just so like in the zone working and working and working and the next thing and the next thing and then just the whole day just flies by and it's just where did the day go <laughs> but yeah so I've been working non-stop been working on the manuscript been working on the covers for my other journals that I'm releasing the dream journals I don't know if I've talked about that yet because I haven't edited these videos but I've been working on the dream journal covers I made those myself I came up with the concept from for the what the cover should look like myself. I f formatted the whole interior on my own. I put the logo in there by myself. <laughs> I did that whole thing. And I think I want to release those probably in September, but maybe October. And then on the timeline, I talked about this before, but on, in October, I'm aiming to announce the book announce the release date of February 2nd, 2022, and to announce the pre-sale beginning November 2nd, 2021. <sighs> that is why I feel like I'm such in a time crunch to get things moving, get things done, get things finished, and especially also because my cover designer, she needs three weeks before... Okay, so basically, to be able to do the spine and the back cover, you have to know how thick the book is going to be because that would obviously change the sizings. So I have to have my whole manuscript formatted, completed, and just in pure polished finished form before she can do the spine or the back cover. And by the time that it's completely finished, she needs three weeks after that date to be able to work on the spine and the back. <sighs> Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So it's all a matter of like time management and then trying to figure out what needs to get done first, what's the most important thing to get done. And then on top of that, I've been working on the business aspect and trying to get all of those things in line before I begin selling stuff. And that includes like business bank accounts, that includes my taxpayer identification number, that includes my trying to get my fictitious business name or my doing business as. And then so I filed for that and then I had to pay for that fee. It wasn't that much. I think it was only like 55 bucks. Am I talking too fast? What else have I been learning? The formatting has been, oh my gosh. Oh my God. 
like insane. The formatting has been absolutely, I don't even know the word, like you have to be so meticulous and look at every single line spacing and make sure everything is uniform and looks symmetrical and beautiful and figure out what font looks good and professional and looks like something a traditional publisher would use and then put my logo in there and make sure all of them are aligned correctly and then make sure all the margins are just right then you have to have a gutter in the middle so that the spine doesn't take away from the inside of the interior so everything is centered on the page and then you gotta add page breaks so that the page numbers are not on every single page because in the front matter you do not want numbers in the back matter you do not want page numbers either and then you have to figure out what's the front matter and what's the back matter and in the front matter you need to have a title page you need to have a title page with the publisher logo and then the subtitle and then you have to have blank pages in certain spots and then you have to have the copyright page and then you have to figure out what goes on the copyright page and then you have oh my gosh I could go on and on and on and on and on but I don't think you guys necessarily want to know about all those things. <laughs> but this is about documenting my process. But yeah, I've learned so much. I feel like a genius right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having, like, I feel overwhelmed, but it feels like a good overwhelmment. It feels like a growth. It feels like growth. It feels like these are things I need to know to be able to be an entrepreneur, to be able to be an author, or at least an indie author, a self-published author. And I wanna talk about that too. Why did I choose self-publishing over traditional publishing? Well, I wanted to have creative control over what goes on the front of the book, what goes on the back of the book. I wanted to have creative control over what goes on the inside of the book, what I can and can't say inside of the book. I wanted all the ideas to be original and authentic to how I feel and what I believe. And <clears throat> also, with traditional publishing, you would have to go and get a literary agent, and the literary agent would have to accept it, first of all, and then they would have to go out and try and find publishers who would be willing to publish your book. And then on top of that, I'm not even sure exactly how that process goes because I didn't go that route, but I know that, or I, I think, I think that with traditional publishing, you usually get a certain amount of money up front. Like they basically buy your manuscript and then they're in charge of all of the outside of the book, all the editing of the book. They're in charge of the marketing of the book and they have a much more extensive they have much more extensive access to like things like money and resources and they have more connections to people in the industry as well mm. so it could be a very good route to go but for myself I wanted creative control of those things that they would be taking control over but I also don't think I understood exactly how much work that would put on my plate and it has put a lot of work on my plate <laughs> and I put I gave myself a deadline of announcing in October and I mean it's just I'm hoping I can get it to that till that date I might have to push it back so it's been quite a ride quite a journey to to make this book what else Oh, my developmental editor, she gave me the idea to add an epilogue. She said she was interested in me talking about my, how it feels to have written the book, what I plan on for the next stage of my life, mm, basically like an ending to the book. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. So I started the epilogue today and that has been very cool to uncover as well. Oh, there's pretty sunflowers over here. And I've been working on that epilogue. I'm gonna go keep looking at the manuscript. Keep just trugging along. Try and get this completed as soon as possible. Oh, that's another thing I've been having to learn. Publishing. 
there are so many ways that you can self-publish, like so many platforms that you could publish. And I've decided that I want to put it on Amazon KDP first. And in order to do this, I have to have I have to have my own ISBN, so I cannot use the free ISBN that comes with the Amazon or Ingram Spark platforms. If I were to use those free ones, that would mean that I could not publish that same book at the other place because it already has its own ISBN. Unless I think maybe if it was in a different edition or if it was updated, then I could publish it to a different place. It's confusing. <sighs> so I have to get my own ISBN and I found out that an ISBN for one of them costs like $125 but if you buy a package of 10 of them then it costs it costs like $250 or something like that. So it's a much better deal if you get it in bulk and you need one for every single edition of your book. So if you have an ebook, you need an ISBN for that one. If you have an audiobook, have to have an ISBN for that one. Paperback, hardcover, all of them have to have their own ISBNs. So I think I'm gonna buy that soon. And yeah, so I chose Amazon KDP and Ingram Spark to upload. The reason I didn't only go with Amazon KDP is because they don't do paperback pre-sale and that was something I really wanted to do for my marketing strategy, I guess. You could call it that. And they also offer hardcover. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm not going to be telling you what's coming in next week's video, so you'll have to tune in next week on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you want to know what happens in next week's video. I hope you guys have a good week. And again, if you want to learn more about my book, you can go to www.vibratetocreate.com or you can find me on Instagram at vibratetocreate. The book is actually available for pre-order already. So if you would like to pre-order the book, it is available on Amazon, Google, Apple iBooks, on Kobo for people in Canada. It's also on Amazon and it is in paperback and ebook formatting and the audiobook will not be coming out until who knows when. Not yet though. Thank you for joining me on this journey and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh hey, you come here often? A Journey into Truth is available for pre-order.